Welcome back to VBAR11. Today I'm going to talk about the geometrics of the helicopter and um, especially if you're converting a helicopter which well uh, isn't made for flyberless or you choose a head which isn't in a package where where uh, where it's uh, a proven package if we put it that way. Uh, First of all, let's go through the different things we have as an option. What you, if you look at the head, the width of the total head at zero pitch, uh, that will determine uh, how much throw you get on the blades. The wider the head, the less throw for the amount of movement down at the swash. Uh, so if we need to uh, get less throw, we could widen the head or choose another head uh, which is wider. The swash plate is the opposite. The more narrow swash plate you have, uh, the less throw on cyclic you get. It won't affect the collective because the swash moving up and down, but it will um, limit the cyclic. So if you have problems you could, if you, if you have a swash that allows it, you can put on smaller or shorter ball links and uh, by that lessen the throw. And we, if we go down and have a look at um, further down here, here relies the problem uh, with many helicopters today and that's this bell crank. Uh, the helicopters are made for flybar and when you have flybar you have a mixing arm that actually limit the throws up on the blades. What manufacturers has done, especially on this Aurora and uh, T-Rex 700, well almost any new machines that you can get is to have a very high ratio going from the servo to the swash plate and that's because they re rely on you buying good servos in return you get less interaction you get uh, more connected feel faster everything is better until we are going to convert it to flyberless then it we run into problems uh, so the optimal way of converting a helicopter like this would be change the frame, remake this uh, bell crank so you can get the ball further in uh, and therefore you can run full throw on the servo and still not got, get too much movement on the swash. Unfortunately that's quite a, a big change on the helicopter so the only thing we have left to do is to move the bowlings on the servos inwards. That way we will limit the throw on the servo. We will uh, have to check all the way up that we have as good as we can get it. So how are you going to check if you have the correct throw? There is a tool online on VStab where you actually uh, check how much collective uh, or actually you put how much um, collective in the program you have uh, for 11 degrees pitch then you measure in millimeters the space uh, on the head between the bowlings and then you measure the space between uh, the bowlings on the swash put that in into an online form and uh, it will give you uh, the cyclic gain in the program however I actually do it um, in another way right or wrong uh, I, these type of team probably don't agree with me but the uh, formula works and that's actually I measure how much cyclic pitch I got and uh, let's say we get 10 degrees at 70 uh, on cyclic ring cyclic ring is the hard limit for this wash and we if we get 10 degrees cyclic on on uh, on uh, uh, with 70 on, on the cyclic uh, ring we get a total amount of cyclic gain same as logos meaning 100 so that's the optimum would I get cyclic ring 60 and still get 10 degrees I can use the same formula and that's basically I can put on what I do is for safety reason I put on 25% you can 
even put on 40% uh, up to forward 40% but I put on 25% on the cyclic ring and put that as a as the cyclic gain as a starter uh, anyway this is uh, the only parameters we have to work with and, and well unless you should switch the head and or change the swash or rebuild the helicopter you only have one thing option left and that's moving 